shout of praise. Are you ready? Come on, let me see you give the Lord a dance this morning. The Lord has been so good to you. Come on, reach it. Seven second, let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Amen, amen, amen. Good morning. God bless you in the name of Jesus. What an amazing time of praise, praise, praise. And that, that's what you get at SLC. I mean, like I said, there's been a very strong surge and a revival of praise. And God has been good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Can we lift our voice and lift our hands and bless the name of the Lord? Um, the one who has been good, the one whose um, mercy is endures forever, the Lord strong and mighty, um, the Lord mighty in battle. There's none like you, Lord, and there's none absolutely to be compared to you. You are God all by yourself, and we just want to give you all the thanks and all the praise. We honor you this morning. We give you all glory. We give you all adoration. Because there's none to be compared to you. You are God all by yourself. And I just want to thank you. We bless your holy name. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. Um, lift your voice loud and clear and bless him. Lift your voice loud and clear and bless him. Bless the name of the Lord. Um, the one who lives forever and ever. Um, the one whose throne and whose dominion is incontestable. Um, the Lord of hosts is his name. I want you to bless him and honor him. Truly magnify him. Um, there's none like you, Lord. You are God all by yourself. Oh, I give you all the praise. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's none like you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. Lift your voice and just be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Oh, thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we're praying. Amen. Now, um, one of the things I have learned in dealing with people, um, should I use the word particularly Nigerians, is that people tend to believe that once a situation is frustrating, there is, no one should bother them about doing it right. I, 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 God um, placed a burden in my heart. I don't know whether it's going to be a book um, or it's going to be a teaching for, in the, for now. And, and the title is The Science of the People. Um, I've been gathering, you know, um, you know, there's a branch of systematic theology that is actually um, philosophy, all right? Where you, I'm sorry, I've left talk about anthropology, where, yes, where you understand the science of the people, all right? This is the way people are wired, this is the way they are designed, um, and all that. Um, this is the way the Bible says this work, all right? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. No matter what your burdens are, do that first. Yes. Enter into his court with praise. You see, the formula has been given. It is now left to us to live a life that is applied to the formula. All right? I, I, I taught mathematics for a while, and I know that any um, equation that you can't remember the formula, you can't solve. Once you can't remember the formula, forget about it. Yeah, you, you will discover that your creativity without the formula is futile. There's nothing you can do. It's gone. 
The Bible is clear. This is the formula. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will glorify them, they will not be small. That is the formula. Jesus demonstrated it. He had um, three loaves of bread, two fishes. He gave thanks. The formula is clear. Amen. Is there someone here who wants to say, regardless of the pressure, um, regardless of the things I'm going through, um, I just want to come before God and just... Do, you know what Esther did? I, you know, that, that, that lady, Esther, eh? I don't think there's anyone that she will do that to that will not break. She broke the protocol to see the king at the point that could cost her life. The king said, well, Esther, well, I mean, there was, you know why the king as himself was afraid for him, for her, because there was an automated law. It, it's an automated law. Uh, no matter who you are, you don't see the king around this time. Um, generals gather, that's when they plan for war, that's when they do all those things. So she could be killed on the instance. They could think that um, she's been sent as the daughter of one of those people who want the king dead, and then let's, let's get her down. That could happen immediately. Only for the king to say, what do you want? And she said that my lord the king will come for a meal. Ah, you place your life on the line just for the king to eat? Ah, Esther, what do you want? <laughs> so imagine waking up early in the morning and you say, you know what? God, today, I just want to minister to you and give you all the praise. We must never approach God for new things like he has not done some things before. No, that's wrong. We approach him with a heart of gratitude first. Are you with me? So wherever you are, if you can stand, stand. If you can kneel, kneel. If you can lay down, lay down. At least as one that God has been good to, thank him yourself. Without being told this is how to do it, thank him yourself. Bless his holy name. Because he deserves all thanksgiving and he deserves all gratitude. So I want to see you thank him yourself. Oh, we bless your holy name. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. We just want to worship you. We just want to thank you. Because you deserve it. You deserve thanksgiving. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the glory. There's none to be compared to you, Lord. You are God all by yourself. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the adoration. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, we bless your holy name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Um, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, let's um, look at the book of Romans, chapter number 9, as we still pray into the subject of the goodness of God. Um, Romans, chapter number 9. Let's start the reading from Romans 9. Let's start from verse 15. Romans 9 from verse 15. Please, I want you to pay very keen attention. All right. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but of God that shows what? Mercy. Now, you know, as a Bible student, if you read, if you are not careful, if you read that phrase, oh, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on, and compassion on whom I will show compassion, you may feel ah, that it's, an, it's a, um, um, I don't want to use the word, B.I.D. case, it's a, a case that is dead on arrival. In the sense that you feel, eh, so there's nothing we can do. As a matter of fact, 
The reason why he said I will have mercy on women, I will have mercy on compassion, I will have compassion, is the proof is that he has even been showing you mercy before you know how to ask for it. So if we only have mercy on those who ask for it, we will not be existing. You must understand that. So before you, you, you even learned to know how to say, Father, have mercy on me, he has shown you mercy. I remember when I was growing up, there was a girl. I was living opposite our building. Their building faced our building. When you stand on our balcony, you'll be looking at their balcony. So every time the girl comes out, I think she was looking at me. And I, I like the fact that I thought she was looking at me. So I see if you are looking at me, I'm gonna look at you also. So I, yeah, so she was just there, and she has a very cool face. So Hey, Jesus Christ, assumption can kill. So I, I thought the cool face was that, oh, the girl likes me. So I, I, I wrote a letter, you know, to her. I, if love was a fruit, to be an apple. If love was this, if, I just wrote a very stupid letter. <laughs> Unfortunately, she was the younger sister of one of my friends, but not too close friend. <laughs> That's how I sent the letter. I can't remember how I sent the letter. I think they're a gate man or something. I want to show you mercy, <laughs> how mercy works. I was at my balcony when she was reading the letter. She looked at me, looked at the letter. You know, the letter you had with, with this, I thereby dropped it with my golden pen, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense, stupid things, family Lazarus. That's how the girl read the letter. And the way she zoomed inside the house, I knew that there was trouble. Wahala. <laughs> so, whether it was the Holy Spirit, it's a mercy, it's a, just give me insight. Run, run, <laughs> run downstairs, run downstairs. As I ran to our gate, I met her at our gate. How are you doing? Where are you going? Say, Is your daddy at home? Ah! God shall show me mercy. That was the life we were living. On Sunday, we'll come back from church. We'll sit down outside. A couple of other boys. Some of them are pastors, Kito. We'll be discussing. We're learning, like long, young lions learning to hunt. We'll be discussing how to talk to a girl. So when one passes, one will follow the girl. And two pass, one follow. When you come back from your own hunting, you come back and sit down. Till they tell you, yeah, follow that one again. That was the life we chose. It was mercy that chose us for this one. What I'm trying to show you is that the mercy of God is a demonstration of his goodness. He showed you mercy before you even knew. Are you with me? Yes, How to... Before you even knew the importance. Are you aware that if there's a day without mercy, that's the day you'll be finished? If a day ever opens up, and mercy will not be shown to you. That day. If only you know the defense God has mounted around you. Not the ones you prayed for. Because your prayer can't cover everything. But the one is goodness covers for. The security architecture around your life. Come on, thank him for mercy this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank him for his... Mercy. Thank him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his mercies. Oh, we give you all the praise. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let me show you a secret. And so, if, if church is a spiritual clinic and pastors are God's privileged doctors and then administering the word of the Lord. 
I will say that I'm, I'm the kind of doctor who doesn't like to lose a patient. I don't, I hate it. So that's the reason why, I, for me, that is what informs my people have asked me, what informs your study pattern, what involves your um, ability to show up all the time. One of the things I've found is that I've seen people who pray so well and yet becomes victim and casualties of certain things. And many times I've had, I've had questions, and I know you too, as, as believers, you have had questions. Um, why can this person and that person look at how this person pray, look at how this person does? Why, how can people like this and all that? Most times, people fail to realize that there is the limitation of our general request. Mercy covers large space than you can imagine. See, there are things that by the time you said, Father, please show me mercy, you are telling him to show up in ways that you not even know the devil is planning to attack. Show me your mercy. See, I, 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 I beg you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, in Exodus chapter number, Exodus, um, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter number 2, 1 Samuel 2, 3, there was a warning that was sent to Eli. God told him, he said, see, um, two, chapter 2, a warning was sent for a man, then the second one um, by Samuel. But let's talk about the man. God told him, he said, see, you have not sanctified me for your children. He said, before I have decided that you and your father's house will be priests before me forever. But now I've changed my mind. God, if I, God said, far be it from me. He said, they that honor me, I will honor. They that despise me, I will lightly esteem. But in Psalms 89, he told David, he said, if your children forsake my ways and keep not my status, he said, with my stripes will I chastise them. But my loving kindness and mercy will I not take away from them. Two situations. Different approach. Is God by us? No. One has obtained mercy. Father, today, I find mercy in your sight. The mercy that speaks, the mercy that defends. I find mercy in your... Show me mercy. Myself, my children, my household, my family, show us mercy. Show us mercy. Mercy. Show us mercy. Show us mercy, Lord. Show us mercy. Show us mercy. Show us mercy. Show us mercy, Lord. Please, Lord. Show us mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Show us mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord. Show us your mercy. Please have mercy on us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord. Show us your mercy, Lord. Have mercy on us. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on us, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Oh, yes. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord. Show us your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Say the amen loud enough. Amen. My pastor used to tell us that prayer is like money you invest in a bank. And I, I, it, I, it occurred to me uh, that there are bank accounts you open, um, that as you open the account, you, they also open domiciliary account for you. They open in dollars, in euros, and in some other currencies. If prayer is like money you deposit in a bank, then you want to make sure that you also have hard currencies. Mercy is deeper. You see, sometimes we don't ask for mercy because we are proud. Because you feel, you know, we, we take pride in the fact that I'm very perfect. Look at me. You can't find anything in me. No, 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 no. In fact, 2 Corinthians 4 from verse 1 says that, Seeing therefore we have this ministry, we faint not, having received mercy. 
So mercy is anti-fainting. He said, but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not working in craftiness or handling God's word deceitfully. All right, but by the manifestation of truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in God's sight. The, the ingredient that makes that possible is what? Mercy. The same way if you cook, if you make a soup and you have gotten crabs, prawns, fish, whatever it, call it fisherman soup or catfish, whatever it is you call it. As long as you forget salt, it will be bland. Mercy is what makes life sweet. Let me beg you. It doesn't matter how much God has helped you to be perfect. Never put it as a legal tender. Let me tell you something. All right, this is a conversation between me and God. I mean, I, can, and I have scripture for it because the danger is that when you put a doctrinal con, 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 um, establishment on Rema that is not founded on Logos, there's no scripture for it. That's where we have wrong teachings from. But let me show you something. I mean, I, I was just talking with God this, this about ministry. Why some ministers die young, blah, 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 and all that. And then God said to me, said, many of them stay under the protection of their calling. That they say, you know, I'm doing this, that, that. As long as I'm doing this, God is doing, God is obliged to do this. Thank God for that. But you better leave the one, do what you are doing, but don't stay under the covering of what you are doing. Stay under the covering of what Christ did. Because the day you fail to do what you are doing, you say the devil come and attack me. But what Christ did is finished. John 19.30 When he received the vinegar, he hid up the ghost and said, It is finished. He nailed everything to the cross. That is where you should hide. Thank God for prayer the way we pray. Thank God for fasting the way we fast. Thank God for study the way we study. But I would rather hide under the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So when we begin to shout, Jesus, have mercy on me. We are not saying that we are uh, living our lives in sin. You know, um, there is a side effect of trauma that is faced by Nigerians. And that's the fact that a salmon makes no sense to an average Nigerian if the salmon doesn't beat them up. Um, you think about it. If you scroll through a website to download a salmon and you see a topic, the goodness of God, and then you see another one, um, 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 failure to do these 10 things means that your life is over. Which one will you download? <laughs> Say, which one is the goodness of God? I know God is good. How, how do you know? You, say, yeah. you see that? We are used to being beaten up. That's the life we have chosen. And it's bad. And it has national consequences. It has um, even ecumenical consequences and all that. I want every one of us, wherever you are, to get up. And there's a prayer I want you to pray. Um, in developed countries, even when you buy your car, you are still paying insurance, right? which is similar to sometimes what we call higher purchase. Like, this is yours, but, but I think the good thing is that if anything happens to that car, the insurance company takes care of it. They may also upgrade your insurance, whatever it is. Okay, but they take care of it. I want us to have an insurance policy this morning. You are going to decree, Father, my health is insured under the package of mercy. Listen to this. The quality of my life I'm living is ensured under the package of mercy. Now, mention, listen to this. You know, there are areas that the devil begins to threaten you with fear, right? Begin to mention them and bring them under the covering of God's what? Mercy. Now, these are intimate prayers between you and God. So I may understand if you are not shouting, but take a posture that allows you to pour out your heart like Anna did. 
Okay? Take, find a posture that allows you to pour out your heart. I ensure my health. I ensure my life. I ensure my marriage, my living under the covering of what? Mercy. Go ahead now. All right? Lift your voice loud and clear and pray it. Lift your voice loud and clear and pray it. Pray it. Let your mercy speak, Lord. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Lift your voice loud and clear. Don't, 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 don't joke with this prayer. Oh, yes. Don't joke with this prayer. Oh, yes. Don't joke with this prayer. Pray it. Pray it like your life depends on 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 it. Oh, yes. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy. Mercy, mercy. My health, I ask for mercy. Oh, yes. Mercy, 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 mercy. In my finances, I ask for mercy. Oh, yes. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy, Lord. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. In my marriage, show me your mercy. By your mercy, I run through a troop. I break existing patterns. I break existing protocols. By your mercy, by your mercy, I will not be a slave to evil patterns of my lineage. By your mercy, I am covenantly and divinely exempted. By your mercy, show me mercy. Oh, yes, show me mercy. Oh, yes. It doesn't matter how much people have been missing it. In life, where I'm coming from, I am exempted, not because I know how to do better, but I'm exempted under the package of mercy. I'm exempted not because I know how to do better, but I'm exempted under the package of mercy. Show me your mercy, Lord. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy, Lord. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Show me your mercy. Oh, yes, I came from a place where um, people are used to failing. I am exempted from that. I am exempted from that. I am not a part of this rubbish. I am not a part of this rubbish. Not because I am better, but by your mercy. Oh, yes. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy, Lord. Please pray. My children's health, my wife's health, we are insured under the canopy of mercy. Mercy. Let mercy speak. Mercy that speaks over judgment. Let mercy speak. Let mercy speak. Let mercy speak. Let mercy speak, Lord. Let mercy speak. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, look at this. Um, there's an aspect of God's mercy. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking more about it. And that's the aspect of divine restoration. Restoration is angered under mercy. And I'll, under, under God's goodness. And I'll show it to you. There are things that, if you look at them naturally, they are too bad for you to humanly think anything can be done. Um, um, let me show you something. For instance, God speaking through Prophet Joel said, I will restore to you the years that the locals and cankerworms have what? Eaten. Um, first and foremost, the first one, one is too good to be true. Time, one of the qualities of time is that time is faithful. Huh? No matter how, you see, people gather to watch eclipse, the sun, the moon, and all that. But no matter how much you try to do all those things, um, if you missed it, uh, I don't know when our own eclipse in Nigeria will come. See, they say it's next year. 
But if you mix it, I think it's another 20 years or thereabout, whatever it is. If you say, hey, you say I'm busy, I'll come back and tell you. If it's gone, it's gone. You only see pictures. Because time is designed to be faithful. Time is designed to be faithful. When it goes, when it passes, it passes. So first, God says, in my goodness, when you have lost time, you have wasted years that you can't account for anything. He said, I will restore. So I decree today, everyone who have lost years, who have lost time in fruitless efforts to do things, I decree and declare, those years are restored to you. Amen. You have wasted time doing things that produce no results. I decree and declare there is restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree and declare there is restoration. Amen. You will enjoy restoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will restore to you all the years you have lost. Amen. You labored in places and there was nothing to show for it. God himself will reward you and restore to you. Amen. But he did not just say we will restore years. Ah, he said I will restore the years that the low costs have eaten. Low cost is, a, is the worst nightmare of any farmer. Because they come in millions. It's always an army. If you see a place where low cost are... When the plague of Egypt, locusts can blot out the sun for their numbers. Imagine millions of locusts landing on leaves. In seconds, you can't find anything again. And unfortunately, as they eat, they pass it out. So there's nothing anybody can do. But God said, even when, see, when he said, I will restore the years that locusts have eaten, he went to look for what demonstrates the height of impossibility. That was why he asked um, Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? When it gets to where it gets to, when doctors hands off their hands, and everybody takes off their hands, and say, hey, this is where it stops. God shows up in his goodness to restore. To anyone who feels their best days are behind them, God is saying to tell you no. It's going to bring back good times. Amen. It's going to bring back good times. Amen. In case you didn't hear me well. For those who think that their best days are now behind them, I've come to announce to you no. All the years that the devil thinks they have swallowed up. There is restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your best days are not behind. They are ahead of you. There is restoration. Now hear the voice of the Lord. Everything stood. You know, he said that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. Sit down now and imagine what can happen this morning that you'll have to eat your head. Am I dreaming? Have you ever touched the kind of help before that looks like a dream? Let me ask you. Have you no, you need, if you have not, just answer, have you? The kind of help that looks like a dream. There comes a day that that kind of help comes. That you'll be hearing, am I hearing what I'm hearing? Am I seeing what I'm seeing? Is this me? Is this true? Is this real? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that what? They said there was a mouth filled with singing. Ah, a mouth, you begin to sing. You are tongue filled with laughter. You start laughing. There are people that it's been a while they laughed deeply. You will laugh in this season. Amen. You will laugh in this season. Amen. Now, listen to what I'm saying. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. We serve a God who is alive. I was watching Daddy Joe yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he said to those who are laughing now at people who mock pastors, who mock this, he said to tell you, don't forget, he who laughs last, laughs best. <laughs> that statement fear me. 
<laughs> People might be mocking you now and say, we've always known. Look at your life. We know there's nothing too special about you. He who laughs last, laughs best. There are times that God allows people eh, mock for a while. It, you, it, that's your own season. There are times that allow them. You do what you want to do for a while. It's your own. That's your season. But he who laughs last, laugh. I wonder Sarah named Isaac Isaac. means laughter. We laugh last. When they started calling her Sarah, um, the mother of the um, princess, people were laughing. <laughs> look at your, look at that. Princess at 80 something. Until you start seeing kings pursue the princess. <laughs> he who laugh last, laugh best. They look at us, look at them. Mumu people. They gather every morning, say they are praying. They say they are doing this. Uh, look at Japan. Japan is so developed. He who laugh last, laugh best. Don't let anybody gaslight you. Don't let anybody trick you. Oh, gaslight is not. These people want to finish me. Don't let anybody guilt trip you hmm? into um, abandoning your place of prayer. The, the, the Bible already foretold, foretold this season. Say people are going to, the law of people will wax cold because iniquity will abound. Christians are being bullied away from the place of prayer, insulting them because. Only few have been trained to have a revelation of what they are doing. Any clown who opens a blog or vlog, that people have found out that the way to get con people to view your content is to write anything controversial about a pastor or against the church. Unfortunately, these are people that were also raised in churches, but were not trained. If they insult you, you say, look at them. Then they pray. He who laughs last. At best. Many of these people are still coming back to us. Say, please pray for me. I apologize. Somebody met me. I said, I want to come and beg you. Said, ah, for what? He said, I was the one. This is, he said, I was the one that changed my name to be insulting you on Twitter. Ah. <laughs> there are many. I was the one that also changed my name to be insulting you on Instagram. <laughs> there are many. I also changed my name to be insulting. People can do all sorts of things. Set your face like a flint. Discouragement gets heightened when you are closer to your breakthroughs. Never forget that statement. He who laughs last, laugh what? Yes. They are like laughing at you. Don't, don't, don't forget it. Don't forget it. And I, I, I just want to pray specially for people who are in a situation that right now, people are now mocking you and mocking your God. Um, if this describes the situation that you are in, um, I'd like to request that you um, be very intentional about saying amen to these prayers. Okay? I want to specifically pray for you. But before I do that, if you understand the sound of my voice, and you, are not, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you continue in that path, you won't laugh last. It doesn't matter how much you are laughing now. Nobody will laugh in hell. We are not using hell to threaten people, but it's a reality. Jesus already died for your sin so that you will not die. It's a popular scripture, and I know you know it. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I need to beg you in the name of Jesus. He has given you Jesus so that you will not perish. So you can have life eternal. You need to accept him. Believe in your heart that what the Bible says is true. It's God sent him to the world to die for your sins. Believe he came. He died. Then he also arose on the third day for your justification. What do you then do to be saved? You confess his lordship. Confess what you believe right now that I've just shown to you. That is the gospel. And that's why we tell you to repeat after us. So if you are giving your life to Jesus, you want to hold out your hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe 
that you came to this world to die for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose on the third day for my justification. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I accept this gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that, that's the most profound confession you can ever make. There's a number on the screen, 090-3095-9735. 090-3095-9735. Send us a message there, all right, so that we can reach out to you and get you disciples. It will be a joy and a pleasure to hear from you. Now I want to decree over people whose situation has attracted. I'm seeing somebody, but this looks like a lady um, that um, um, her mouth odor is congenital. When you enter a place and just speak, people start avoiding anything that has to do with odor. I stretch my hands and I command the fountain of it to dry up now. Amen. Now to those who are going through cases, people are mocking you and they're asking, where is your God? In the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I join my faith with yours this morning. And on the account of the mercy of God, I decree an end comes to this siege. Amen. I decree that your tears are wiped away. Amen. I decree that your tears are wiped away. Amen. You will not cry anymore. Amen. Those who have gathered to mock you will soon also gather to rejoice with you. Amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus Amen. that you will not be missing when your testimony is cooking. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The mercy of God will bring you out of that Amen. many waters. In the name of Je Amen. Jesus. We silence mockery. Every siege of mockery, either for things they feel is not going well, it comes to a total halt right now. Amen. There's no more place for mockery in your life. Amen. It is over. Amen. For everything that has not been going well for a while, that has attracted different statements around. Right now, I decree there is divine intervention. Amen. On the account of God's mercy, He shows up for you this Amen. morning. There is divine intervention. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there is divine intervention. Amen. The mercy of God will speak for you. Amen. The mercy of God will speak for you. Amen. The mercy of God will speak for you. Amen. Everything that looks too scattered to be arranged on the account of God's mercy, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree divine order now. Amen. The bare bones were very many and very dry, and yet at the blast of a breath from God, there was a mighty shaking and a mighty noise, and bones came to bones. Everything that looks too scattered to be arranged, by the sovereign power of God, they are arranged this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now it is well with you, it is well with your household. Amen. No devil will touch your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so excited about this morning. Amen. God is doing amazing things amongst us. I'm so, so excited. Um, and see, it is wrong to pray and not expect a testimony. Do expect a testimony, okay? And please do send us testimonies. Yes. Praise God. I'm pleased to announce that the first lecture for the International School of Ministry commences this week. All right. So, um, I mean, we can't wait. We can't wait. It's, 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 it's going to be an amazing time um, in God's presence. A time never to be forgotten. Um, we can't wait. God strengthens you. Um, by God's grace, I'm, I'm ministering in Anambra today. So, if you are in, in a way, you are in, around that environment, yeah, I mean, you want to find your way to be there. Um, you can check on Apostle Duchuku's um, social media platform and see it. It's going to be a time never to be forgotten. 
And I understand that there is also a minister's conference also arranged with that meeting. You will never recover from the effect of what is coming. So if you are listening from the East, then you want to be a part of this meeting. It's going to change your life forever. I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. God bless you so much. Have an amazing time. Bye-bye.
Thank <laughs> you.